This presentation will cover concepts related to the construction of a confidence interval for the difference of two means. Note that this presentation is not meant to replace your reading of section 7.3.1 in the textbook. While watching this presentation, it would be very helpful if you follow along in the corresponding section of the textbook. Lastly, please note that you are responsible for reproducing all parts of this presentation on paper according to our course guidelines for formatting of written work except for any portions that appear in italics or any slides within the presentation that are specifically identified as not requiring reproduction. So in this presentation video, we are going to consider a difference in two population means, that is mu subscript 1 minus mu subscript 2, under the condition that the data are not paired. You may recall that in section 7.2 we covered the case where we had paired data. Just as with a single sample, we identify conditions to ensure we can use the t-distribution. Except, now we do so with a point estimate of the difference between two sample means and a new standard error formula. Other than the above two differences, the details are almost identical to the one mean procedures, that is the four-step process that we have been using since Chapter 5. You will need to reproduce all work associated with the example that starts on the next slide. So the following example is drawn from Section 7.3 in your textbook. And the question asks, does treatment using embryonic stem cells, that is ESCs, help improve heart function following a heart attack? So the table below contains some summary statistics for an experiment to test ESCs in sheep that had a heart attack. Each of these sheep was randomly assigned to the ESC or control group and the change in their heart's pumping capacity was measured in the study. Please note that the ESCs group is designated as group one, so I will use subscripts of one throughout the problem for that group. And then the control group is designated as group two. And again, I will use subscripts of twos for that particular group throughout. A positive data value corresponds to increased pumping capacity, which generally suggests a stronger recovery. Some additional information that was given in the textbook for this problem statement were a couple of histograms for the embryonic stem cell transplant group. That sample uh, distribution is shown as a histogram. And then for the control group, a similar histogram of the change in heart pumping function is shown on the right. We will now go through our familiar four-step process to identify a 95% confidence interval for the effect of ESCs on the change in heart pumping capacity relative to the control group. So we're going to begin with our prepare step. First, I want to identify the sample mean, standard deviations, and sizes. So I go ahead and take a look at the table that we were provided, and I go ahead and copy that information down for the sample statistics for each group. Remember, group one is the ESCs group. Group two is the control group. The next thing we do is we determine the confidence level we were given in the problem statement that that is 95%. And then the last thing we need to do in the prepare step is to calculate our point estimate. That is the difference between the sample means. And in this case, the value is 7 and 83 hundredths. Next, we move on to the check step where we're going to verify the two conditions that are needed to ensure that the sampling distribution of the difference of sample means is nearly normal. So we begin with independence extended. Because the sheep were randomized into two groups, independence within and between the two groups is satisfied. Moving on to the normality check, we check the outliers rules of thumb for each group separately and we note from the histograms that there are no clear outliers in either group. Keep in mind that we're looking for clear outliers because the sample sizes for both groups was less than 30. So that's the requirement for that rule of thumb. We do take note though that from the histograms, the ESC group does have a bit more variability, but that is not the same as having clear outliers. Therefore, since both conditions are met, we can use the T distribution to model the difference of sample means. We now move on to the calculate step of our four-step process. Since the conditions that we were checking for held in our check step, we are going to start by computing the standard error. Take note, though, that we find the standard error using the sample standard deviations, S subscript 1 and S subscript 2, as estimates for the population standard deviations in the formula 
that we have from the central limit theorem. So I've shown the formula below. Notice here in the original formula would be the population standard deviations. We have changed those to use the sample standard deviations. When we plug our values in for the sample standard deviations, we come up with a standard error of approximately 1 and 954 thousandths. And I just want to point out that the standard error was rounded to one decimal place more than the sample statistics that we were provided with in the problem statement. So the next part of the calculate step is to start forming a sketch for constructing our confidence interval. We start by drawing the difference of sample means axis with a t-axis below it. Notice I've also shown the units as being percent for the difference of sample means. I'm going to go ahead and put at the center of the scale the uh, difference of the two sample means that we, were, that we calculated, the point estimate. Then I'm going to scale upwards by units of standard error. Notice again that I round those to three decimal places because our standard error was rounded to that number of decimal places. So I go up four standard errors and then I go downward to the left for standard errors until I've completely scaled the variable axis. Now this next step is where the two means case, the difference of two means case, differs dramatically from what we have done for one sample means. In the past we've had a degrees of freedom that was a very simple formula which we then used to find a t asterisk value for constructing our confidence interval. However, when we're dealing with a difference of two means, the degrees of freedom needed for finding the t asterisk value is quite a bit more complicated. So we're going to bypass that process of finding the t asterisk value first, and instead we're going to use our guru to directly find the degrees of freedom rather than using a formula. And for free, at the same time, we're going to get the margin of error and endpoints of the confidence interval. So within our guru, we start by going to the analytics, left click on that, left click on analysis, come down to mean inference, and we're going to select the drop down menu item, left click on one and two population. And we begin by going ahead, we're not going to select the data set because we're entering in the values directly. So I come down here to the summary, and I'm going to click left click in the label area and I'm going to type in ESCs that's going to be the label for the first population of data that we are putting sample data in for we know that our sample mean was 3.50 sample standard deviation was 5.17 and I skip on down to the sample size which was size 9 I'm going to label my oh, enter uh, value okay I didn't put 9 in there there we go I then come over here to label for the second population which is our control group so I type that in Type in the sample mean of minus 4.33, sample standard deviation of 2.76, and then lastly, the sample size for that is also 9. I have now entered in all the information we need to perform an inferential statistics um, confidence interval construction. Okay, so I now click on population 1 and 2, because this is going to be my difference of two populations. And I am doing a confidence interval. The confidence level is 95%, so I leave that as is. I'm doing a t-statistic test. It's a t-based test. Everything else remains as is, and then I now come up here and I click the preview button, and notice that I get all the values that I just typed in. These are the two groups of data that we have from our sample statistics that we were given. And then down below, notice what I'm given. I have the standard error calculated for me to three decimal places, 1.953. That matches, 1.954, excuse me, that matches what we already calculated. So that's a good, good thing to check. The degrees of freedom to two decimal places is 12 and 22 hundredths. And notice I have the lower bound of my confidence level, three and 58 hundredths to two decimal places and 12 and 8 hundredths to two decimal places for the upper confidence level uh, endpoint. And then we also get the margin of error. That would be 4 and 25 hundredths to do two decimal places. Uh, so we get all of that information from our guru. Now that I've shown how to use our guru to find our confidence interval information that we need, you'll see that I have on the slide the work you would need to write down on paper. So on paper, you would need to write from the RGuru mean inference population 1 minus 2 tab, using t-statistic method, we then write down the three key pieces of information we need, degrees of freedom, margin of error, and the confidence interval. 
Notice the margin of error and confidence interval are written to three decimal places in this case because that's what we have been rounding our calculated values to one decimal place more than the sample statistics and then my degrees of freedom is rounded to two decimal places. So the last piece of information we need to complete our sketch is the T asterisk value. So we begin that process by finding the upper tail area that we will need for the R-Guru calculator. In this case, that area is 25 thousandths based on a confidence level of 95%. Then I go ahead and write down on paper what I would do within R-Guru to find the T asterisk value. And lastly, I would write the T asterisk value down on paper. In this case, it's approximately 2 and 17 hundredths. Note that since I've already shown how to use the R-Guru calculator, I'm not going to do so again in this video. However, as part of your written work, you would need to provide everything that is shown above. So now that we've used our guru to find all of those numerical values, we're going to finish our confidence interval sketch by first of all adding vertical lines at the plus and minus t asterisk values, and then we're going to shade the interval in between those vertical lines. And then lastly, we go ahead and label the plus and minus t asterisk values at the bottoms of the vertical lines, and of course the endpoints of the confidence interval at the top. And that completes the process for constructing our sketch for the confidence interval. Let me point something out real quickly. The interval found in this video differs slightly from the one found in the textbook for this problem. And the reason why is because the textbook uses an approximation for the degrees of freedom, which we bypassed by using technology. You are expected to use the Arguru based techniques shown in this video not the techniques that are provided in the textbook for constructing a confidence interval for the difference of two means. So we close out our four-step process with the fourth and final step, which is to conclude. We're going to interpret the confidence interval in the context of the problem. So we state we are 95% confident that embryonic stem cells improve the heart's pumping function if she in sheep that have suffered a heart attack by 3 and 58 hundredths percent to 12 and 8 hundredths percent. And that concludes this presentation.